Uh, no. Why? Why you? We are more inadequate than they are. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're more dependent. That's right. That's, That's exactly right. right. Yeah. Um, the first words out of Jesus' mouth in the first sermon he preached in the Gospels was, "Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven." And that that phrase, "being poor in spirit," yeah. means that you need God so bad that you're dependent upon Him every step of the way in order right. to survive. Yeah. And that's how we've had to live. We we d haven't had the 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 movie experience in Hollywood. We've never been trained in film school. We ha didn't have the money, any of those kind of things. But we went to the Lord and we've talked about that we're the little boy with five loaves and two fish. You know, It's not about us. It's about what God can do with so little if it's given to him. So we've given him all that we've had and said, Lord, here's our lives. Here's our future. What do you want us to do? And he's led us into filmmaking, which is, again, way beyond our ability. And, and, and most people would say, God, this is what I want you to do. Yeah. I just want you to bless it. And they have strings attached. Mm -hmm. and, and, it's, and, and part of, of totally trusting God is cutting those strings and saying, God, I will do whatever you want me to do. You know, I wish the scriptures, you mentioned the boy with the two loaves yeah. and three. And three and, and, and th was it three fish? And five, two, five, five loaves. Five, five loaves do fish, right? You'd think I would know that. Um, I wish the Bible would have given us a little insight into the impact it had on him. I wonder if, oh, he, had yeah. an, I wonder if he had an ego problem after, well, yeah, after you know, all this, you know? Good, great question, great <laughs> comment, because think about this. Um, because he gave up his lunch yeah. to God, and, and the Bible says that Jesus multiplied that and fed over 5,000 people where there was 12 baskets left over. So we know he got to eat too. The little boy ate, ate too. Yeah. So, so, so he got to watch God do something with the little he had and then he still ate until he was full. But I wonder if he became a celebrity. Uh, Who knows? You know? yeah. I don't think so. And, you know, and, and here's, here's the question that I'm leading up to. Yes. You, 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 both of you fellows have been interviewed by everybody. Uh, you, you have gained increasing notoriety uh, in a positive sense. Uh, you're, you're on a track. Uh, as the Lord tarries, who knows what this may build into one day. How has success impacted you? I mean, you started out spiritually impoverished. You say that was your key qualifier. Uh, how is your spiritual poverty today? Uh, I'll yes. say something now. I know Go he's ahead. got something yeah. too. I would say honestly, um, it was exciting at first and it's still exciting to watch what God does. Yeah. But as I see the Lord do things that I am not responsible for, mm. uh, lives touched that I've, people I've never met and hearts changed. I know I can't change a heart. I am less impressed with myself yep. and more impressed with what God does. Mm. And I think um, even though, yes, we're gaining experience, yes, we're trying to raise our level of excellence as far as making films, and that should happen. God is a God of excellence. So, so we, we're trying to achieve as fast as we can a higher level of excellence. But the fruit, and when I say the fruit, the changed lives, the people that are impacted that call us from all these different nations, only God can change a heart. We can't do that. Now, you're handling it well. What about your congregation? They are as well. Our yeah. pastor um, keeps them humble. Yes. <laughs> How does he do that? Well, by preaching them. the truth, you <laughs> yeah, know, yeah. and we, we've seen that the Lord also prepares us before He calls us, and yeah, so yeah. in our situation, uh, doing a whole lot of breaking and crushing and humbling, you know, uh, I can't remember what great men said that before God mightily uses a man, He first must wound him, mm. and uh, a lot of times the Lord, uh, you know, He's He's close to the brokenhearted and the contrite spirit that He will right. break us. Uh, like Mary breaking the jar and pouring the ointment on Jesus' feet. You know, God will break us so that the fragrance of Christ can pour out of us. And so Alex and I can tell you stories about breaking that God has done in the past because beforehand we had too much pride to be able to handle. We wouldn't be ready to handle any kind of success. And now we know that we're the boy with loaves and fish. We know it had to have been God. Yes. Well, Stephen, the, uh, a primary theme, a core value of the movie, is uh, fathering and fatherhood, yes. and uh, we won't won't give away the plot and how things in, evo evolve in the movie. But um, why did you why did you focus on the fathering thing? What was it about the fathering thing that gripped you? After Fireproof, you know, we had focused on marriage, and we were saying, Lord, what next? What's the next thing we need to focus in on? And everything around us began to focus in on fatherhood, whether it be we're reading scripture, whether we're looking at the stats around us, or close friends that we have that we're seeing how their fathers are impacting them. And Alex and I are very passionate about the issue because our father was a chain breaker. You know, he, his father and, and grandfather were alcoholics, immoral, unfaithful to their wives. And uh, our dad grew up very insecure, poor, uh, because of the lack of fathering that he had. 
but he came, he gave his life to Jesus Christ and he was completely transformed and, and he forgave his dad, which is so hard to do yeah. if your dad has wounded you. Mm -hmm. And he said, the buck stops here. He said, as, as for me and my house, we're going to serve God. And, and I, I want my kids to grow up knowing the love of their father and, and seeing faithfulness in the home rather than unfaithfulness. And so Alex and I grew up seeing a dad and, you know, we, we didn't stumble upon him looking at pornography. We stumbled upon him on his knees in prayer, praying for our family. Yeah. And we saw him standing in integrity sometimes getting fired from his job because he was choosing to do the right thing, you know. Mm -hmm. But then he blessed us and loved us and unconditionally just tried to support us with his prayers and his encouragement. And he's still our hero, you know, that we love. And so we're, we're very indebted to the Lord for giving us such a great dad. But at the same time, we see people all around us who don't have that, who've been wounded by their fathers. Mm -hmm. And so we started praying, saying, God, how can we help dads in this generation? How can we give them a vision for what real good fatherhood looks right. like? Because right now, across America, and what I'm hearing is, is the same in Canada, yes. this generation doesn't know what a great dad looks like. Yeah. You know, they, They're not seeing it on television. It used to be that fathers on television used to be honorable and heroic, and they, they provided for their kids, and they protected them. Now they're passive. They're, they're, they're incompetent. They're immoral. kids. Yeah, yeah. They're immoral. They're yeah. perverse. Yeah. They're goofballs and their yeah. wives dominate them, their children out with them, and they're the butt of the joke. And so what does good fatherhood look like? You know, Well, it's throughout Scripture, and we've seen it in our own lives. And so we wanted to show what does it look like when men go through a journey of trying to figure out how to be a great dad. Uh, I found myself several times uh, um, weeping in the movie. Mm. Uh, a lot of it relates to the, my own personal challenges. Mm. Uh, raising my grandchildren now. Yes. But um, I thought it was exceptionally well done. And friends, you're going to love the movie. You really are. And you want to see it. And now, um, if you are a member of a church and you'd be interested in going with a church group, uh, here's one way that you, you can go. Uh, group ticket sales are available at 1-855-856-6868. Uh, one 856 6868 Six eight six eight, or you can log on to CourageousCanada.ca, CourageousCanada.ca, and you'll discover there are two friends that um, there's a lot of uh, follow-up church resources that are available to you that uh, will uh, catalyze some um, excellent, um, I suppose, men's groups, huh, guys? Oh, uh, absolutely. Uh, uh, sitting down together and just kind of talking and being open and frank with each other. That's right. And there's a number of uh, churches and ministries across the nation who are endorsing this movie. Uh, we want to have an exciting first day. Uh, that first weekend is critical. It's huge. And uh, you've, you've met the Kendrick brothers. You have a sense now of their heart and why the movie is what it is. And you just got to go and see it. Sony Corporation is behind it. Uh, it has a uh, secular release. It's got all of the markings of a real hit. And we want to encourage you to go and see it. Thanks for coming our way, fellas. Oh, thank, thank you. you Look forward to seeing the movie. Thanks.